Over the time of pandemic, the UK has been supporting their own population and business. Now that everything is going to an end, we are waiting to see the future of our economy. Today we will visit Heather Davidson, a former graphic designer who opened her acupuncture practice in 2012. Now she's a practical tutor at CACM and a Japanese acupuncture with Toyohari Association. Um, I was somewhat lucky because I'd worked in, um, you know, graphic design and online uh, platforms before. So I did my own website, I, you know, con I connected it to social media and, and basically I started like that. I work 24 hours as an acupuncturist a week, pretty much, but I also teach at the Acupuncture College, the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine in Reading. And to be honest, right at the beginning, it was fine for me to go slowly because I was just getting used to being an acupuncturist and what, you know, how that would work. Right. I kept my job going, basically. And then in the background, I built up um, this, this business. My role um, model, in a way, was um, watching other acupuncturists and other physical therapists and how they worked. Uh, the, the one good thing about being a physical therapist is that if you work for yourself, which most people do, you can decide your own hours. So it makes it really easy and much more convenient to fit it around other things you may have, like other commitments like family and, and things like that. Uh, you have to practice full body acupuncture, or oriental um, medicine and acupuncture as I do, you have to start with a degree, so it's a degree level. And then in order to maintain your uh, qualification, let's say you have to do um, continuing professional development is what it's called. So, uh, but to be honest, most acupuncturists don't just settle with a degree. Every year you're, you're training and you're, uh, you know, you'll see a bunch of patients that are all coming for something and you'll go and do a course on that to try and increase your your knowledge on that. So, so I see a lot of people for fertility, acupuncture actually has a better record than IVF uh, for helping people become uh, pregnant. So I do a lot of that and I do a lot of uh, relaxation and stress release or for people who have other symptoms because of stress, acupuncture is very very good for that. And until you see an acupuncturist you may not know if what you're experiencing is related to stress. So during coronavirus it was very interesting because there were a few patients who I've been seeing for a while and with the lockdown they um, had a much easier, simpler life and for some of them their symptoms disappeared. So for me that's very interesting to know just how much stress we have just on a day-to-day -day uh, day -day basis because our lives are just so very busy. Something very interesting in, in terms of how well acupuncture does its job is that I had a few patients who have migraines, uh, quite severe migraines, and I've seen them for over the years, four or five years. And um, we got to a point where they were off medication and they hadn't had a migraine for years and they were coming just for regular acupuncture, say once a month or once every six weeks. Uh, and this was, you know, working for them. And then through coronavirus, they had their first migraine in a few years. And uh, they immediately booked in when I opened, and then, and they are now migraine free again. So before COVID-19, I had the ability for people to pay by card, for example, if uh, they wanted to. Now, everyone pays by card. And I've also got an online uh, booking system now, uh, which has a link for payment. So a lot of people are paying before they book in. That, that's an example of technology. And my online booking system kind of takes care of, of all my bookings. Either I do it myself or patients can do it themselves. Helped people slightly in the beginning. But really, we're all going to be paying for that at some point, and probably small businesses are going to end up paying for that in, in some way. So it, it's, it's, just, it's managing that risk now, really, isn't it? And, um, and just, we might be paying for this in years to come. So that's a concern that, you know, everyone was very keen to, you know, get, some, get as much assistance as they could. I don't know if we calculated at the time what that meant for the future.
In the first lockdown, we didn't really know what to do. We didn't know anything really about the virus or how to be more secure about it. Now, we know. We know to wipe down surfaces. We know what will and won't, um, it, what is and isn't a good thing to wipe down surfaces with. You know, we have more masks than we possibly need. Uh, we know how to manage um, disease control. So in a second lockdown, um, because I'm a healthcare worker, um, and because I have evidence that actually acupuncture did help people not go to the NHS, it, it was actually quite a it is actually quite a crucial part of kind of the medical system, albeit not the kind of official medical system of, of the UK. I would remain open as as best I can actually during the, the second lockdown, being really very very careful in in how I do that. I think um, the thing that makes businesses work is if you really love your work and you have a passion for it, then people read that somehow and it, it means people come, it means you get word of mouth referrals and uh, it, it should work. Thank you.